Hi everybody, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me for Transformational Tuesday. I'm excited to have you here for um, really navigating DIY trends. So as you jump on, please let me know where you're from and um, give me your name and where you're tuning in from. Uh, also, my name is Patricia Skelton. I'm from North Carolina. I'm a decorative artist, an artist in residence for Amy Howard on Instagram. I am at Open Window Restore and Facebook Patricia Skelton. So today I'm without a cameraman and I'm going at this by myself, so we'll see how it goes. Um, everybody that puts in a question, then I will make sure that I answer those as soon as um, the session is over. So let's start with what are some of the DIY trends? The first thing as a decorative artist that I start with is what colors are trending? There's two things happening this year. It's really about natural elements and um, anything in nature. So when you think about the colors, it's going to be like muted um, grays. Greens are really big. Brown's making a big comeback. Red's still in the game. And while there, you have all that um, muted natural elements, the other thing is bold, bold and bright colors are also having a big come back in 2024, beautiful lacquers. Um, so there's really two things there when you look at both those elements. The other thing is um, people are looking for what products that they have that would be versatile. So it's about cost savings. They really want to make sure that something has um, a great value and is versatile. And I would say definitely Amy Howard products. She's created all of the products in her line and that is what is, you know, so exceptional about them. They all work together and they each can do a lot of different things. Um, two trends, which I think are worth trying. One, there's a big trend on giving old um, home accessories or objects a new look. And the second one is art. So Amy has finished writings going on right now. And I was so excited when she brought it back. And this would be an example of really doing a relook on something pre-existing. I have, um, this is her vertigray finish. And the vertigray finish, this was just a plain slate gray. And then showing you the exact same accessory. This is her Italian chippy finish done with the Noor and then a blush pink. And so these are both in style now where the other piece was a little bit bland and boring. The second thing is creating your own art. And so that's what I wanted to show you today. So let's get started. All right. <laughs> so learning, learning as I go here. This is the piece I want to show you today. I had to tape up my windows. There was such a glare on my eyeglasses. So you've now seen my whole art room. Um, this is six by six for the, um, as a sample piece. And then the larger piece that I'm going to show you at the end is a 12 by 12. One of the things about creating this is you can use this as a piece of art in your home. I also did a panel adding gold leaf. You can put this on front of furniture and you can even use the same design on, say, if you're using um, a planner. This would be beautiful on an indoor planner, outdoor planner. So that it makes it really versatile. Um, the thing that um, I think that creates an aged look, something traditional that feels like it adds a lot of value because you would be able to keep it for many years, is giving it many layers. So we're going to start with the first layer. So for this particular project, I used a raw wood sample board. This is just a plain plywood board. And um, 
I didn't have to do anything to prep it. I'm going to use Amy's One Step Paint. This is Chavant Blue. One Step Paint doesn't mean that it is only um, one coat. It means that there is no priming or sanding um, required. So if you have a piece of raw wood, you can go ahead and start. I always paint in the same direction as your green to get the smoothest finish. Don't um, push too hard or you'll get a lot of lines into your um, finish. And if your paint is a little thick, which this one, because I had already pre-opened it, it's a little thick, you can use a mister. Some of the other tips on putting um, one step down is it's really good to um, put the can upside down and then as you're using it you want to make sure you stir it give it a few minutes before you start applying the paint and then the last thing uh, is is probably at least 30 minutes dry time and with the 30 minutes dry time um, that's going to give you the best application for the next step. So, all right. So this is our first step. Look at the blue. It's just gorgeous. Such a pretty color. I'm going to put the paint aside. And what I want to sh share with you is where I've already got one finished. You can see it dries a little bit darker and because this is something I'm going to have so many layers one coat is going to be sufficient so two things with this the next step I like to when I'm adding a mesh um, or any type of stencil I like to think of ways that I can make it stand out or different than just putting a mesh stencil on a board so I've taped off the corners so that I will have then a frame around it. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tape off this part. And what this will allow me to do, I can add a stencil, but I'm going to use two colors in putting my stencil down. The stencil that I've chosen is, of course, from Amy Howard's collection, and this is gorgeous. It is Vintage Damask. These have a self-adhesive backing on it. So it's really easy for you to lay it down and apply it. And they last for a long time as long as you take good care of them. You need to immediately put it in water after you've used it. And this is where we're going to come in and add the gel ink. So I have two colors that I'm working with today. One is If the Creek Don't Rise. And then the second one is Hush Your Mouth. And I'm going to go ahead and show you now the next step out. And this is If the Creek Don't Rise on the Chavant Blue. This is the part where we taped it off. And so now what you can do is expose this part of your sample board. And you are going to come over and now cover the part where you've already put down if the creek don't rise. So now we're going to lay this down. The tape, the masking tape that I'm using in the border also is the exact same size as the border on this stencil. If you don't want to have that, then you just need to come to this area and it won't um, mask off anything. So for this, we're going to now apply the gel art ink. This is permanent gel ink. It can be used on um, fabric as well as wood. 
when you're putting it on fabric, it's a warm iron to set it. And when you're putting it on something like this wood, it is a water-based product, so it's easy cleanup. But what you need to make sure you're doing is um, adding a matte sealer if you're going to use a lot of different layers. So, all right, so I think that um, one of the fun things about applying a stencil is you get a great look, but then it's also, all right, how did it turn out? So there we go. And I'm going to put this in water, set that aside, peel this back. And so you can see the difference of how this gives a new look to by just taping off and adding a different color element. So I'm going to set that aside also, let it dry, and we are going to bring out the board. This is our next step out where we now have it completely dried. So on top of this, I want to set back the color a little bit. Like this obviously is a beautiful color, but it's very bright. So to create an age on that, I want to make a glaze. Glaze is always about mixing um, one part glaze to one part paint to one part water. So this is glazed over. Glazed over has a lot of um, different ways to be able to utilize it as well. You can use it with one set paint. You can use it with milk paint. You can use this with um, mica powders. So it just has a lot of different ways to be able to incorporate many different finishes into your art. So for this, I'm just, it's a very small sample. We'll use two tablespoons of that. We're gonna come back in and use one teaspoon of the Chavant Blue. Excuse me, I have a bit of a cold. And then to give it a little bit of a darker finish, it'll be one part black. This is one step. So one step Chevron blue, one step black, one part glazed over. Mix. And then it's going to be one tablespoon, one tablespoon of water. All right, blend it really well. And I notice I've, um, part of being creative sometimes is being messy, so I notice that I'm already getting paint everywhere. All right, so this is the color. So it's a little bit muted, which is going to set back our color. For this, I'll just go ahead and you can apply it with an artist brush with a when you have a small sample like this. Now the one thing um, with glazed over, it's it's translucent originally. Mm -hmm. This this of course has in it um, the one step paint. And then what I'm going to do is remove a lot of it with a lint-free cloth. So when you're using a cloth to pull back some of the material, you want to make sure that it is in a little puff and you push down and you do go up. And remember that whatever you're doing with the glaze, that you can create a pattern. So if you're using a paper towel, then it will create that um, element like within your actual art. 
So you want to make sure that it doesn't have any texture to the part where you're pulling it off. So as a comparison, let's just look at the before and after of a glaze. So you can see it really muted the color. So I'm going to give this a quick dry. The glaze dries fairly quick. So then the next part is adding in a Mylar stencil. So this stencil is part of Celt the Celtic Mylar stencil from Amy Howard's collection. And I think it's beautiful. It's a, definitely um, a classic, another classic piece that can be used on so many different things. So for this one, I just line it up and then um, I typically will give this a little bit of tape to hold it down because it's not self-adhesive on the backing. Okay, and my tape isn't going to come off with my gloves on today. So this part of it is really giving it a raised effect. So in creating a raised effect, you can do a few things. You can use um, embellishment gel. Um, in this case, I've used Venetian plaster. And the Venetian plaster has in it the Chavant One Step paint. And this, when you put it in the Mylar, it will give you a raised value to it. So, let's go ahead and add some. When you're mixing one step with Venetian plaster, this is where you're going to mix them both where it's wet. So, instead of putting your one step into a dry formula, you do one-on-one -on -one with your Venetian plaster and then you add your one step. In this case, it is about how much you want to add about the color. So it's about tinning it. Um, if you want a, you know, a darker color, you would add more paint. So applying this just like I would um, regular Venetian plaster and just come through your piece and then come to the side. Okay, and then let's go ahead and remove that. I'm not going to fill in the entire piece to save time. So this is how it looks. Now, what happens is as the Venetian plaster dries, it will lighten in color. So this is the same application. And look at the difference. Okay, now I've added a couple more um, elements, decorative elements on the side. So now that we have, we're up to this part, the next step that we want to complete is make sure that this is smooth. And we are then going to come back and we're going to add a light wax and a dark wax and then dust of ages. So this is the Puck Light Wax and it has just a tint to it, um, which I find is gorgeous. I think this is so much better than clear but I definitely feel like it probably depend on what you were putting this application on. 
The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you take a little bit of your, after you apply the wax to your brush, to take a little bit off to ensure that you're not overloading. So two things is you don't want to put too much wax onto your art. And then in between, what you can do is if it feels greasy, then you've got a little too much. You want it to be light in touch. Let it dry for just a few moments. We'll take one of our sample boards to help us dry out the wax just a touch. Okay. And now we will add lightly some dark wax. So you want to start around your corners. And I really want to get a little bit on so it catches the edges. Because this is a raised element. And so you can see how, look how it comes back in there. And then, of course, our corners. Now, when you pull up your framed in tape, in this case, I left this part blue. On the sample board, I did um, linen, one step chalk paint. But now you get to be able to see that other color and the difference it really makes. Yes, I find um, painting a glove presents a challenge just on a couple of things that you're working on. This is another thing is um, sometimes your paint could pull. You can come back in. Um, you can come back in and touch that up or you can just, you know, appreciate the difference. And then if you want to tone that back a little bit, you just come back around. I'm going to take the same lint-free cloth that we had earlier and just come back. Make sure that we have the wax pushed in before we add Dust of Ages. The Dust of Ages... It really, it, it is exactly what it says. It's creating a little bit of dust, another element that sits back your project just a bit. And always go ahead and add it, add enough that you really cover your piece, but do it on um, a plate or some type of cloth where you can then put the product back into your canister. So this is Dust of Ages. Now, what you really want to be able to do is leave this on just for a few minutes before buffing it off. Okay, so that gives you an idea of with it added, and we're going to come back with our lint-free cloth again. We're going to buff this back a little bit. Now, if you buff in the same place because of the wax, you can get a really shiny element. And for a piece of art like this, you would want some of it not to be shiny. All right. And that's our final piece. Now, what I want to be able to show you is um, the reveal. So I'm going to show you two pieces for the reveal. Let's see. I'm going to have to turn my camera back. Bring it over. 
All right. So this is this is like a home design reveal. I wanted to reveal the pieces for you. That was how it looked before. So this is 12 by 12 piece of art. And then this is using an old shutter that was resin, adding gold leaf to it, but it's the same elements. So I think they both turned out beautiful, but I am a fan of blue. Um, I've got blue throughout my home. So I hope you enjoyed our quick fashion today for art and that um, if you decide this, to try this project or do any other project, I'd love to see it posted on Amy Howard before and after. So have a wonderful day and thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.